G'day guys, Ben from Ozjack here to bring you another video. This one is going to be looking at kayak fishing essentials. So, when we think about kayak fishing and we want to get into kayak fishing, I believe personally it's great to, um, to start off with a good investment in a good, well designed, purpose built fishing kayak. This particular one is the Ocean Kayak 4.3 Prowler Ultra. And it has heaps of different options for customization to suit your type of fishing. Uh, and I've set mine up to suit, to suit me, basically. So aside from the kayak itself, we then need to, uh, to get the kayak to, from the car to the water. And we do that basically with a, um, with a trolley. Uh, the one that I use is a sea tug. And I've chosen to use the side winders, which uh, mean that I can get through soft sand heaps easily. And you'll find that I'll do a review of that um, very shortly. Okay, now we're in the water. Uh, the next thing we're going to need uh, is a life jacket. Okay, again, you want to set this up for success. So you're setting it up to help you do uh, kayak fishing and to be safe on the water. Uh, it's a mandatory requirement in New South Wales as well as some of the other states as well. On that, um, I believe a helmet is a really good option, and there's a couple of videos of mine uh, on my YouTube channel which um, highlight the need for a, a good a helmet for kayak fishing. Okay, the next thing we need is a, um, is a fishing rod. So I use seven foot rods, and the reason for that is that I can easily control the fish all the way around the, uh, the kayak without risking overbalancing. I'm going to use a rod, obviously. Um, I'm then going to leash it to the kayak. And what that does, it means that if the, uh, the rod was pulled out of the, the rod holder by, um, by a fish, and that does happen from time to time, then I'm not going to lose the rod, and I'm also less likely to lose the fish. I like to look at um, quality rods and quality reels. So this particular rod is a, um, a Seal Star Crystal. That uh, is seven foot. Um, so this is a two to five kilo line. So this is my estuary and my bait fishing rod, really. Uh, it's great for things like um, garfish, brim, flathead. I'll even look at small tailor on this kind of thing. Uh, yakas, slimy mackerel, that kind of stuff. Um, I've loaded it with um, some fire line. And also um, I've got some, uh, a good leader as well which goes up to a snap swivel because I like to be able to change rigs. I don't have the option really of uh, being able to take lots of different rods with me as I would do if I was fishing from a boat. So I need to be able to do it that way. Another really good option is hand lines. And uh, just in front of where your feet sit on the kayak are two little recesses and they're absolutely fantastic for a small six inch hand line. So I've got two set up for bait fishing. Uh, one just simply has a size 6 long shank hook and the other one has a small bait jig on it. Um, really good options if I want to, um, if I come across a bait school, I believe locally sourced fresh bait is going to be the best. Far, far better than um, even the best service station squid or pilchards or whatever it might be that they're selling on the day. I think a, a sounder is a really good option, but if you understand fishing, it's not always essential. So if you can look at things like bait boils and understand how to read uh, the water and what's happening in the water with the fish and that kind of thing, then really a, a sounder is a luxury and it helps confirm what you might already know, but it's not uh, necessarily essential. But it's a great little asset to have. I'm really working forwards to backwards here more than anything, so um, rather than just going to and from around the kite. Um, I use a, a Berkeley hook out as well. These things are great for when you're um, handling pelagic fish. They only cost like $10. Because I personally um, target some of the bigger pelagics, I like to have uh, a gaff and a set of lip grippers. And both of those get secured to, uh, to my center hatch. Um, and they're all good to go. A comfortable seat is a must, obviously you're going to be sitting basically uh, in one position for maybe um, you know, four or five hours, so you do need to be comfortable in your seat. 
I like to customise my kite and um, to set it up for fishing, so I've got some Albi bait buckets on the sides and I carry uh, some soft plastics in those or some, some bait, depends on what I'm using on the day. I also like to have a set of um, fishing flies. Nice and easily accessible. Something to bear in mind guys is that um, because your kayak sits much lower to the water and it's far more exposed to salt water than any boat would be, uh, you do need to maintain your gear and look after your gear, otherwise you're simply going to lose, uh, lose it and it's going to not serve you as well as it could do. Uh, a knife is another really important option. I use, make sure I, I get knives that come in uh, plastic scabbards and that way they're um, secure and, and less likely to cause injury. So we've all, uh, looked at our rod. Again, another one of the great uh, features of the, uh, the ocean kayak prowlers is they have rod, rod holders built in. I've accessorised mine and you can look at some of my other videos on how to customise and, and insert the rail blazer products. I do believe in being, uh, being seen. I think it's really important. I use a, an orange kayak, clearly, um, and I've got a nav light and a, um, and a high visibility flag. So that means that um, other people on the water can see me and they can uh, provide me with the courtesies and abide by the law because they can see me. So uh, it's a legal requirement to stay a minimum of four metres away from any boat with lines in. And if they can see me, they've got no excuse for not doing so. Uh, I keep a Berkeley yak net on the top of my pod as well as a um, uh, one of the drift anchors. I believe both of those are essential. So most fish are lost at the side of the kayak. So you need some form of way to control the fish and one option is going to be a net. Another one might be uh, your lip grippers. Depends on the species of course. And to be able to then de-hook the fish with the, uh, the Berkeley hook out uh, and deal with your fish. Then you've got a, how are you going to store your fish? There's something to, in, to consider. Uh, I use a, um, the ocean type pods and a great um, feature of that I think is that I can carry most of my fishing gear goes inside the pod uh, when I'm traveling to and from my kayak fishing destination and uh, that way it just helps keep the sand and the salt and the smells out of my car. It just makes it easier. Um, I do believe in, uh, a rudder is a useful and a, a, a benefit if you understand how to use them. Rudders are, are less about turning corners and um, controlling the direction of the kayak and they're much more about um, being able to stay in track. So what that means or, or in line. So once you've picked a line um, and you want to drift in a particular uh, direction, um, the, the, the rudder will just help you to counter the action of the wind. It's not like a rudder in, in the same way that a, a rudder is on a sailing boat or something like that. So um, don't purely rely on on the rudder for your direction. Uh, of course, uh, an anchor trolley is another um, really important thing. So what that means is you can um, pick a location. So for example, you might uh, pick a sandbar near the mouth of a river because um, you can see fish feeding in the area and that way I can then anchor up and to counter the, um, the action of the current I can position the anchor in such a way that uh, the kayak is then not going to roll over and that kind of stuff. So um, good things to think about there guys. Um, I don't think it's, it's crazy expensive to set up a, a kayak. When you think about how much it costs to set up a boat, kayaks are way, way more um, more efficient with money because once you've basically bought your kayak and once you've set yourself up really all you need to do is maintain so um, I change out my hooks every um, six to eight weeks um, depending on how often I'm in the water um, the other things like I'll, I'll do is just make sure um, I keep my rods and my reels clean I look for any damage um, and service any sort of working parts or anything like that but basically um, the uh, the amount of maintenance required to go into this kind of setup is minutes compared to hours and hours and hours that I know friends of mine spend on their boats uh, in terms of maintenance. I think it's crazy, but if they've got the money, well, so be it for them. Uh, okay, well, I hope this, uh, this video has been a benefit to you guys, and um, by all means, let me know what you think of my new logo.
Cheers. Well, thanks for watching. I'm going to be building my YouTube channel with an average of two videos per week, eventually covering all sorts of topics on kayak fishing from reviews of gear, reviews of kayaks, location reports, even hook and cook type uh, ideas for you. I'm looking forward to any comments or suggestions you might have. Please leave a comment below or you can message me directly through YouTube. If you liked the video, please like it. Please feel free to share this video on other social media such as Facebook or uh, Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time, tight lines and stay safe.